This is a third segment on the modify commands. I'm going to start with the stretch command. The stretch is slightly trickier to use than some of the uh, ones I went over in the previous two videos, but it's very important and powerful uh, to kind of get to practice with and uh, take advantage of. With the stretch command, it will usually be easiest to start the command before selecting your objects. So I'm going to do S enter to start the command. And you typically want to do a crossing window, meaning it's a green window, across the um, objects in the points that you want to relocate. Let me kind of demonstrate what I mean. Let's say we want all these lines to get longer. Now, I could one by one pull the grips up, or I could draw a contemporary line up above in order to extend them. Um, but the stretch command is a really fast way to solve a problem like this. So I did S and then space or enter. Now I'm going to put a window across the tips of the lines. So kind of think about which endpoints you're getting. You're getting the top endpoints of all five of those lines. But I wouldn't want to go across the whole lines, all of the lines, because then you'd get the top endpoints and the bottom endpoints, which would mean you'd essentially be moving the lines instead. So you want to kind of cut across the lines with your stretch box. When you're done selecting, hit space or enter. From here on out, it's really like doing the move command. So you can click your base point and then guide your mouse and type in a distance. Or I can use a base point and then a second point if I have certain O snaps to use. But if you move your mouse for a sec, you can see how basically all those lines are like rubber bands. And I can stretch them to the right, the left, or up, etc. So obviously, if I want to go straight up, it's important I have my puller on. And then I can type in if I want them to be 10 feet longer, 10 feet, enter. And now the lines are 10 feet longer. So that's an easy example of how stretch is very powerful to lengthen something. Uh, the same would be true like if you had a floor plan. Let's draw a really generic floor plan here real fast. And maybe you had a, a wall that was inside the plan like this, and you realized it was in the wrong location. And you could move the wall, but then you would have to you know, retrim out the lines that intersect with that, etc. So with the stretch command, I could do a crossing window over those parts that I want to move, like this. And then when I'm done selecting, hit Enter. And let's say I know that it needs to be moved one foot to the left. Click my mouse, guide my mouse to the left. I click my mouse, guide my mouse to the left, and type in my distance, one foot, enter. And now the wall's been moved over. So you can see how that uh, makes it very easy. The next command is the array command. Now again, it's a little trickier maybe, but very powerful when you want a, a quick solution to get multiple rows and columns of an object. Like let's say uh, chairs in a uh, large gathering room where you want to have, let's say, 10 rows of 10 chairs, something like that. Uh, there are lots of other reasons to use array, but that's just one example. I'm going to select that little rectangle that I drew to kind of represent my chair. And then AR is your shortcut, AR. And you can see there's two basic options for array, rectangular and polar. Rectangular is going to give you rows and columns. Polar will copy something in a circular fashion, uh, like chairs around a round table. So I'm going to stick with rectangular for now. You can decide how many rows you want and how many columns. Let's say I want 10 and 10. And it gives you a little preview of what you're going to get, which is kind of handy. And you can either type in a row offset or if you have it set up with O snaps on screen, you can click on the pick row offset icon here and actually select points in your drawing in order to determine it. Uh, so I'm going to uh, just type in, let's say five feet for that. Let's do six feet. I'll do the same for my rows and columns, just as an example. And uh, I already have my object selected, so I don't need to do that again. Uh, note that if you didn't do that first, you could do that with this icon at the upper right corner. Now, the other nice thing about Array is that it gives you a preview because it's easy to make a small mistake in your settings here. So I'm going to preview, and then you can decide whether or not you like that. 
Now, wasn't that a lot faster than trying to copy it? Now, the command line says, press escape to return to the dialog. In other words, if you need to change your settings, or you can right click to accept. So if I like this, I can right click. Uh, otherwise, it'd be easy to go back and fix my settings if I made a mistake. So that's the rectangular array. So let's do the same with this line around the circle. So I'm going to select that and then do AR for array. I'm going to do the polar this time. Now I do need to select the center point. So I'm going to use the little icon here and then select my in point of the line or center of the circle. And you have several options for how, what information you know or how to determine where those lines are going to go based upon total number of items or the angle, etc. So let's say hypothetically that I know that I want six lines and I want to fill 360 degrees because I want it to go completely around the circle. So I'm going to set that up as an example. But you can, uh, most of these are pretty self-explanatory as far as what your options are. And I already, I already had my object selected, so that part is done. Otherwise, you could use your icon at the upper right again to do that. And then preview. And you can see how that's divided into six pie pieces, basically. Let's say I don't like that. I can hit escape to return to my dialog. Maybe I want it to be seven pieces instead. So seven and then preview. Now it's equally divided into seven segments. So you can see how you can go back and forth very easily. And then I can right click to accept. So uh, that was an easy uh, example of how a array is very helpful. Another very handy modify command is polyline edit or p edit. I talked about the polyline command before and how it's very handy, especially because it has such handy grips to add vertex points and things like that. But the polylines have uh, some other uh, modify abilities that you should be aware of. The shortcut for polyline edit is either p edit or simply p e. P e is uh, obviously a little shorter. So if I select a polyline and do PE, you can see you have a multitude of options, including uh, join, width, edit vertex, spline. Some of these are a little bit more handy than others. Now, notice that it says open. The fact that it offers to open means that your polyline is closed. So if it says closed, that means that it's open. So that kind of tells you right away whether or not you're dealing with a closed polyline. Now keep in mind, it has to be a loop in order to really close naturally. If you try to close one that's not a loop, it will try to finish the loop for you, which sometimes results in uh, things that you don't really want. Now join is great if you have two polylines. You can just hit J for join and then select the other polylines and join them together. You just have to make sure that your drafting is precise for that to work. Um, width is handy if you want to assign a width and actually have it show on screen. Let me show you how that works. I just hit W, and for the width option, maybe I'll do three inches, and enter, and you can see how it actually shows as a fat line or polyline on screen. So sometimes that's nice when you want that to be represented very boldly. And then you can set it back to zero uh, if you want it to be normal. Um, edit vertex allows you to get to the actual vertex points uh, and you can cycle through them. So if I do E for edit vertex, and you'll notice the current vertex has an X on it, like a cross. So if you wanted to, you could cycle to the next vertex by hitting N space, and then you can see that it's moved on to the next point. Now, if I wanted to insert a new point, I could do I for insert, and then click where I want the next point to be. You can see how that very easily dropped an additional point. Uh, and then you can continue on by hitting N again, which you'll notice is the default in brackets. So all I'm really doing is saying space. And then it cycles through like that with N. When you get to the last vertex point, if you want to go back, you hit P for previous. And then it cycles back to where you started. So that's sometimes handy. And that's what we used to have to use to add vertex points before they gave us the more powerful grips that you saw in the previous video. Uh, note that the properties palette is also very handy to modify things like the width of a polyline. If your properties palette is not automatically open, you can select an object, 
right click and go to properties and that will open your properties palette for you you can also use the shortcut ch for that which sounds a little counterintuitive but that's an old shortcut and so you can see the global width that was what we were changing earlier you can see uh, what color and layer etc everything is on you can see the length of the area of a polyline the area is very useful um, when you are trying to figure out the size of a room etc um, so that's helpful when you're trying to determine more information about something another handy way to figure out the length or uh, size of something is the distance command you can type di for distance and then select any two points and it tells you your distance in a, in a straight line, delta X and delta Y, um, for those two points that you just selected.